Tom Curran, Comcast Sportsnet New England, joins us on the program. Tom, thanks for getting up for us. Uh, how surprised were you with last night's result? Stunned. You know, on a four-day turnaround to take a team that went to the playoffs last year and started this season 2-0, and take them out with a third-string quarterback and shut them out, it's kind of embarrassing for them and pretty alarming, I think, for the rest of the league to see the Patriots do that, I would think. What did you see from Jacoby Brissett? Kind of what I expected. Um, they really, I thought, took care of him with their game plan and made a lot of the stuff, you know, single read stuff. It's not going to be complicated. Drop back if that guy's there, throw it to him. If not, get rid of the thing. But the composure and poise that we saw during the preseason was the same thing we saw during the game, the same thing that we saw last week when he got inserted halfway through the game. I mean, he does a lot of things really well, and there's so many – Good players, veteran players on the offense around him, including Edelman, Gronkowski, even though he wasn't in there a ton, Solder, Amendola, that, I mean, he's, he's throwing to some pretty good players, too. What was morale like when Garoppolo went down? These guys are unbelievably composed. Uh, I, I don't think that it was, I mean, with us covering the team, it's like, holy crap, now they're screwed. This will be interesting. Uh <laughs> With them, they're kind of undaunted. And I think that the kid putting him into that situation, too, the fact that he had a half to play and show that he had some composure and show that he wasn't daunted by it probably put their minds at ease pretty quickly. I think they had a scoring drive pretty soon after he came in, if I'm not mistaken, from last Sunday. So no one was freaking out. Um, and I think that, I don't know if the Patriots like a degree of difficulty at this point, it would be kind of, I hate to use the, the word arrogant because people throw that around so often with the Patriots, but I don't think that they mind a degree of difficulty. I think they like to find out just how much they can do. Do you think Belichick loved the fact that he only had a couple of days and he had a third-string quarterback? In, instead of saying, hey, I got all my weapons, I got Brady here and Gronk, and that, like this almost is back into the laboratory for him to say, all right, what can I come up with on a short turnaround against an undefeated team that's a very good defense and a, you know what can be an explosive offense? Yeah, I, I, he, that's what I mean by degree of difficulty. They would rather have Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski out there. But the fact that they're not going to have those players out there, he gets to find out what the character and the caliber of the team is. And he, he loves to keep the heat on. You know, I was talking to Gerard Mayo about – how Garoppolo performed in the preseason and why he looked like crap then relative to what he looked like in the first two games. He said, you have to understand that in the preseason and in training camp, he puts you in such difficult positions so that by the time the season starts, you've seen a lot of crap. You've seen a lot of things that aren't going to look the same when you get on the field. And if you look at the preseason games, he wasn't throwing to any of the decent players that the Patriots have offensively. A lot of them were sitting down, not playing at all. So when he did get out there, he performed better. So I think that Belichick likes to find out what the caliber of the team is, and this gives an indicator. Again, he'd rather have those players out there, but this kind of stuff actually galvanizes this team when it has the positive results. It's Tom Kern, Comcast Sportsnet New England, covering the Patriots, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. We talked about this yesterday, and it came to fruition of – Belichick game to game and he loves this stuff it's rare when you're going to single out a head coach for a game in September but that's what I did this morning I, I just I mean this is one of those legacy games that and maybe Houston's not as good as we, you know we, we presented them to be but that's pretty incredible performance and you shut them out as well yeah I know I mean that's really remarkable and I know it's a whole coaching staff but it there's nobody that we single out like this, coaching-wise, like we do Belichick, and certainly deservedly so after last night. You know, and he, I felt the same way. I spent my whole column, and I said at the beginning, if you're tired of gauzy odes to Bill Belichick's genius, you might want to click something else because this, I'm going to go on for a little bit here. <laughs> and that's the funny thing about it is you immediately say, okay, he's really screwed, but if he pulls this off, it'll be remarkable. And not only do they – not win 13 to 9. They win 27 to nothing against a staff, you know, chock full of coaches and ex players from the Patriots. And I think that actually played into it when I look at it in hindsight. 
you know, I think the Houston Texans coaching staff was completely unnerved by the threat of the unknown. You know, I know for a fact that the Houston coaching staff was extremely concerned with, okay, who's going to play quarterback? What is he going to do? Is Gronkowski going to play? Will Edelman be out there? To the point where they weren't really that well prepared, and they didn't play as if they were well prepared. And I think that that is kind of the aura that Belichick brings as well. And one other point on this, this is probably the most evolved football program that we've seen, whether it be performance-wise, game-to-game, and game planning and intellectually how they morph and they do this and instead of it being a team that kind of is celebrated in a moment that's celebrated this is the team that has spent the last three games without tom brady on a trumped up charge do you see where i'm going with this see i yeah. always got to get the angle yeah i know and i got it i got it. have you talked yeah. uh, has anybody talked to brady i haven't spoken to him directly no i have spoken to people around him um, Are you allowed to? Is it legal, or is the NFL pro- prohibiting you from doing that? Well, there's a lot of people who think I'm embedded, so uh, that would be a, a violation. But I'm not, so I could if you wanted to. And uh, I'm available at all times, Tom, if you're listening. Uh, Seton has a, a hot take. Now, this is probably going to be borrowed by other shows, uh, but we're willing to give it to you now to get a head start. Seton, give Tom mm-hmm. E. Curran your hot take. The Patriots give Brady and Gronk September off moving forward. So if you say you have smoldering, right? That's a scalding hot take. So if you have, uh, say, Tommy for the next three years, you know, now you just added a fourth. Boom, just like that. Same thing with Gronk, and you're going to be more rested and ready for the playoffs. I like it. It's not going to happen. I like it. But it's going to be a little bit of a – here's the interesting thing. Brady has already played – get this, Seton. He's played two entire seasons' worth of postseason football. He's played 32 postseason games. So it does make sense to get a 39-year-old a little bit of extra rest. But you guys answer me this. As as, As national guys with a broader view, I don't think that this does diminish Tom Brady's, quote, unquote, greatness and his legacy in seeing other players succeed. I think it, in it, his absence. it enhances it, Belichick's. It, it doesn't diminish Brady's as much as it enhances Belichick. And people might say, well, that's semantics. But uh, look, Brady, when you need a big game, when you big, need a big moment, he's provided that. Belichick is just the constant here. Of he, He's the greatest adjuster, uh, game adjuster that we've ever seen, maybe in all the sports. He's, he's that good from game to game, quarter to quarter, half to half. Um, and so I, I just think it enhances his greatness. You've already heard that conversation, though. This this does nothing. Oh, absolutely. But those are people yeah. just don't like Brady. That that that. Oh, see, anybody can win with that that group. You know, anybody yeah. could have won those Super Bowls. And it's funny too because we're only what eighteen, nineteen months removed from him coming back against the Seattle Seahawks with fourteen points in the last ten minutes. And people say, well, Jacoby Brissett could do that. I mean, think about it. I mean, Trey Brady, seriously. Uh, that's the point we're at. That's the point we're at, Dan. All right. Well, keep your head up, though. Oh, by the way, have yeah. you? do you think – now, Jimmy Garoppolo, they, they draft these quarterbacks hoping they can put them in the system and get a, a first-round draft pick for them. What, what happens to Garoppolo in a year, year and a half? That's going to be what's really interesting because does Belichick alter form in that case and, you know, stick with someone? I mean, he said a thousand times, or at least a few, it's better to move on early than move on late. And would he be able to withstand the divorce from Tom Brady, who has is signed through 2019 but with two extremely manageable salaried seasons of fourteen million dollars in two thousand eighteen and two thousand nineteen. But is Garoppolo gonna to want to stay to be a backup for a couple more years, or would Belichick be willing to pull the trigger on getting rid of he gets guys gets rid of guys a year early than a year late normally. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean if in two thousand and seventeen I think that they'll put a for sale sign out on Jimmy Garoppolo this off season. And if somebody makes a ridiculous offer, terrific. If not, at the end of 2017, the Patriots are going to have to make a decision. Do they want to go through the drama of a Brady trade to which a million teams would probably line up? Well, it's not that many, but 31 teams might line up, or 25, and say, yeah, we'll do that. Or do they 
allow Garoppolo to go free and clear with no compensation from them because I can't see them re-signing him through 2020 or 2021 so we can just stand around and wear headphones and look handsome. It's going to be interesting, though, that because it it feels like they may have finally found a uh, a disciple of Brady, and, and so what do you do when uh, when his contract comes up? But we got plenty of time to get to that. Uh, so, no doubt. Yeah. All right, uh, Tom, thanks for joining us as always, and uh, we, uh, we appreciate it. I want you to have a good weekend. All right, Tom, I, I want you to have a great weekend. On it. Okay. Tom E. Curran, or Tommy Curran, Comcast Sportsnet, New England. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 